Well, uh, Lenas, let me take this opportunity and welcome you to my lesson. Today's lesson, we are going to look at uh, grade 11 geomorphology, whereby we will be looking at uh, massive igneous rocks. But before I start with the lesson, I would like to ask you that please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Then, as I've mentioned, that we are going to start by discussing massive igneous rocks. Uh, then, topograph associated with massive igneous rocks. Firstly, let us look at uh, what are massive igneous rocks. Remember, in the previous video, previous lesson, we discussed about sedimentary rocks, which are horizontal layered rocks. Then when it comes to massive igneous rocks, unlike sedimentary rocks, most uh, igneous rocks do not form layers. Massive igneous rocks are formed when magma cools down and solidifies. So you must understand that your massive igneous rocks are formed when magma cools down and solidifies. And then when these um, rocks are exposed to the surface when they are expo exposed to the surface by weathering and erosion they usually appear at the surface as granite dome domes or tors what are the intrusive bodies associated with massive igneous rocks landforms that forms from massive igneous rocks we have the batholith if you can see the number one the patholith, it is the largest. The patholith it is the largest in the massive igneous rocks. The largest landform in massive igneous rocks. And then the second one, we have the lacolith. The lacolith it has your your mushroom shape. And then the third one, it's your lapolith. The fourth one, it's your dike. And then we have the last one, the Number five, label number five, that's your seals. Then landforms such as patolith, lacolith, lapolith, dikes, seals, and pipes are formed by the intrusive activities which happen underneath the surface. So these rocks are formed by a enormous mass of magma that does not reach the surface, but instead it pushes or intrudes in between underground and then solidifies. So, as you can see, uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, these activities are happening uh, underground and uh, under the surface, whereby when these intrusive acti intrusive activities occurs, then this landform will then be formed underneath the surface, and then. These formations may be exposed on the surface of the earth only after millions of years of erosion. So what you need to understand is that although these landforms, your patolith, your lacolith, your lapolith, happen underground, right? So they may be exposed uh, over millions of years into the surface. Now let's talk about the landforms or the intrusions. The patholith, as I've shown you, that the patholith, I've mentioned that the patholith is the largest of all intrusive forms. It is usually made of granite. An example of it will be the Pal Mountain, is an example of a patholith. And then, secondly, we have the lacolith. This one, the lacolith, has a mushroom shape intrusion. So since it has a mushroom shape intrusion, it pushes the overlying structure upwards in order to form the mushroom uh, shape or the lacolith. Then the lopolith. The lopolith then, in terms of its formation, magma intrudes between sedimentary layers. Then the layers underneath cannot support the weight of it, it then sinks down. That is why it then forms what? It then forms a saucer-shaped intrusion is formed because the underneath 
uh, layers of uh, sedimentary layers cannot support the weight of it because it's too heavy. That's why then it then sinks down. Then it forms what? A saucer shape intrusion is formed. Then it is connected to the magma source by means of a dike or a pipe. Then we also have a dike. It's a wall-like intrusion that cuts almost vertical across existing strata. Then we have the seals. It looks more like a leaf. Then the seals, a horizontal ro rock layer formed as magma spread. Yeah, the, the magma spread between the layers. Then pipe, it's a chimney shape intrusion. Magma can move through a pipe, often to the surface. So this is the description of the intrusions or the landform that are associated with massive igneous rocks. Then now let's look at uh, granite domes and tors. How are granite domes formed? Granite domes usually arise from batolites and lacolites which intrudes and penetrate sedimentary la layers. Then, remember, as we have discussed earlier, that your batholith, your lacolith, this landform, they are formed underground. So when the process of erosion and weathering occurs, what will then happen? We will then see your granite dome. Erosion and weathering then occurs until a large granite mass appears on the surface. Just if you can have a look in the following picture. In this picture you can see, as I've mentioned, you can have the landform underground, then when the process of erosion and weathering occurs over millions of years, then the landform will be exposed to the surface, then it will appear as what? It will appear as a granite dome. As I've mentioned, granite dome, they arise from landforms such as your batholith and lacolith. From picture number one, you can see that underground, underneath the surface, but when the process of weathering and erosion occurs, you can see in picture number two, then it will appear to the surface as what? As a granite dome. Then now we are moving to Tors, water tors, and how they are formed. When we are talking about tors, tors look like a heap of partially rounded boulders called costones, looking like they are peeled on top of each other. Then tors, they are found in regions where there are massive igneous rocks, usually where there's granite. Then this type of um, formation often consists of granite. Then here in our country, South Africa, uh, there are many tours in Namakwaland and uh, in the low field, the areas of Mpumalanga, there are many tours. Then tours are caused by chemical weathering. What you need to understand, what causes tours? Tours are caused by chemical weathering weathering below the surface. So in other words, when chemical weathering occurs below the surface, it will result in the formation of tors. Vertically and horizontally um, joints in the rocks are formed as magma cools and contracts. So what you need to understand before the process of uh, chemical weathering occurs below the surface. Firstly, for us to for the tors to be formed, we must have the joints, and then the vertical and the horizontal joints in the rocks. They are formed when the magma when the magma cools and contract. When the magma cools and contracts, they will cause the rocks. To have what? To have vertical joints and horizontal joints. And then 
when water when water passes through the joints when water passes through the joints they are widened by chemical weathering so in other words the joints will be widened by chemical weathering this will happen when water passes through the joints and then as the joints widen distinctive rock shapes are formed then the rocks break down and become more rounded that's how the toes are formed and uh, this is how the toes looks like you see when they appear to the surface they look very nice and what you need to, to what you need to remember about uh, toes is that uh, toes they attract tourists so when they are exposed they are exposed pile of rounded Costones after erosion has occurred. So first, as I've mentioned, joints originally formed as mark cools near the surface. When it cools and constructs, they would be the joints. Then the joints will be widened by chemical weathering. Then this is how the toes are formed and they are very nice. They are looking very nice and they attract tourists. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed the lesson, the today's lesson. So please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel.